Chef here with some turkey roasting tips. Uh, first thing, I'd like you to uh, get your turkey and defrost it. It should be defrosted in the refrigerator for two or three days. Uh, and if it's still frozen, put it in the sink, cover it with cold water, rotate it, and within a couple of hours it's going to be thawed out. Anyway, uh, don't try to cook a frozen turkey and uh, try to buy it early before the holidays come. So this is a nice small one. I think it's about maybe uh, 13 pounds or so. Uh, oh, another thing. On the back of the package, they give you all these directions and everything. Fooey. Uh, not accurate. So you cook a turkey. Everyone asks me how long do you cook a turkey. Is it 10 minutes per pound, 20 minutes per pound? No, you cook a turkey until it's done. 165 degrees Fahrenheit internal temperature in the breast. They give you this pop-up timer, and the pop-up timer uh, is it's okay for uh, amateurs. However, a regular uh, instant read or just a cook's thermometer, you stick it in the breast. If it's 165, the turkey's done. Also, the leg joint will wiggle. I'll be right on a side note, some of my videos are touching on knife safety. So I suggest, especially for the kids, you get them cooking, get the chef's stainless steel glove. With this glove on, you have full protection. No cuts, no issues. I like it, it works, and uh, wow, it protects. That's what it's all about, safety. Yeah, made in America, made in USA, only at your sponsor right there. Yeah, check it out. Get cooking. Okay, another thing. Chefs don't wash turkeys or chickens. We simply roast them, we cook them. So you want to remove the giblets, remove anything that's inside the turkey. Oh, clever. They put a uh, sauce pack in there. I'm going to discard that. Okay, the giblets and the... Uh, the giblets, the heart, the liver go in the roasting pan. Yeah, that sauce pack's going right down the drain there. And of course, we want to uh, rinse it out and recycle it. Don't forget to recycle. It's very important for the earth, for the environment, and for uh, sustainability. So, uh, all the packaging uh, gets recycled, anything plastic. All right, the neck comes out. The neck goes in the roasting pan. The giblets come out. They go in the roasting pan. I'm going to show you in a moment. Okay, I prefer to do this in the sink because I don't want to get juice, turkey juice and potential salmonella all over the place. So the first thing you want to do is you want to take the wings and pop them underneath like this. Helps the turkey in roasting. And then we're going to set this bird right up in the roasting pan. Drain all the juice you can. Wow, the Jambus Cucina Elegante, handcrafted with the finest American hardwoods, food service grade stainless steel, the Elegante features inch and a half thick butcher block available in several sizes and with several options. Call your sponsor and save money. Ask okay, for a discount. In the roasting pan. Oh gonna yeah, it's going to be Any good. Pan works. Uh, I've also got my neck right here underneath the bird as well as the giblets, the heart, the kidneys, the liver, all the good stuff. So uh, this is how you want to prepare your turkey and uh, carry on from here. The next thing, of course, is uh, salt and pepper. Fresh ground black pepper is preferred. You want to get it over the entire bird. And you want to get the bottom of it as well. The uh, fresh ground pepper. Salt. 
salt. I like kosher salt and sea salt. However, I ran out of kosher, so I'm using some table salt today. No worries. Keep it as a backup. Table salt will work fine for a roasted turkey. Generous amount inside as well. Okay, fresh herbs. For turkey, I like rosemary. Oh yeah, we want to get this rosemary into some smaller pieces. Just like this. Mm -hmm. And I've got, got some uh, grass-fed butter here. I'm going to put just a few chunks of butter uh, underneath the breast. So just like this, that should be enough butter. So very carefully you want to get your finger in between the skin and the breast like this on both sides. And what we're doing is we're making a cavity so we can get the herbs and the butter in here. You want to get it in as far as you can without ripping the skin. Okay, two fingers. Oh yeah. All right. We're going to put a little bit of uh, butter in here. And now you see why I don't like that gravy packet. I don't know what's in there. And it's not fresh or kosher. Who knows what the heck is in that package. Ah, the rosemary. It's going to flavor the turkey incredibly. Okay, the butter. Get them right in. Yep. Real butter. Pure butter. Like I said, grass-fed butter. All right. If your turkey comes pre-buttered, who has any idea what they're actually using? No clue. All right, we got the rosemary underneath, looking really good. There's a couple more herbs I like to use on turkey, and uh, quite often I'll put uh, Italian blend, which is uh, basil and oregano and a few different herbs. So I'm going to slap a little of that on here, just like this. some inside there as well. Oh yeah, looking really good. Okay, this turkey is just about ready for the oven. Another chef trick for you. Just a couple drizzles of olive oil. I want this to have really nice color and the oil helps it. Okay, one more thing, very important. Turkey cavity remains empty. If you must make stuffing, that's okay. Make it on the side. You can always add some of the juices, the pan juices here. We're going to make an incredible au jus. A uh, few more tips, I'll be back. Boost blocks. Buy the best the first time. Save money. Oh, yeah. At this point, the turkey is getting some nice color on it. And we're going to do the next step. The next step involves adding some fresh parsley around it, inside it as well. Okay, just a little bit of parsley, as well as uh, mirepoix, carrots, onion, celery, garlic. Uh, I keep some of this in the freezer, so I'm just going to put a generous amount around the turkey like this. Okay, and we want this to uh, gain some color in the next roasting as well. And we're going to let this go now at a lower temperature maybe 325 Fahrenheit. We're going to let it go for about uh, another hour and a half and then we're going to check the internal temperature. Oh yeah. It's going to be good. Oh yeah. A couple hours later. That's what I'm looking for right there. Now the, pot, the, 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 the timer, a little plastic thing, didn't pop up. Doesn't matter. I stick a uh, Chef's thermometer in the largest part of the breast, and I checked the temperature. Yeah, and it got all the way up to 165. Notice the joints. The joints are loose now. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. This is the kind of stuff you're not going to learn on television. You need to subscribe to the channel. All of this roasted vegetables, oh yeah, this is going to make the most amazing au jus 
and or turkey gravy right here. Save all of this. This all gets boiled together. We remove the rack out. You can use a saucepan. Put it all in there. Scrape all that flavor in. And wow, you're going to have a turkey to remember. And once again, don't trust these goofy plastic pop-up timers. This thing right here, five cents made in China. I don't like it. Quality. Stainless steel. USA. I like it. Oh, yeah. The turkey's going to be good. Make sure to subscribe and uh, like and share the video. And how to cook a perfect turkey? Right there. Check out the sponsor's website. It's step by step. It's simple. Learn from the chefs. Wow. Get cooking and have a great day. Oh. That'd be good. So the mystery oil is applied in a circular motion. Here's a thicker one. This is end grain rock maple. The two treatments recommended are designed for working professional chefs' kitchens. There's a reason. Mystery oil is a food safe, ultra pure grade mineral oil. I really like it. Yeah, it's good stuff. And uh, that's where I get it right there. Uh huh. Uh, it's used in combination normally with the board cream. Board cream is a natural moisturizer which seals out the elements and it's primarily beeswax. I get it right there. Uh, beeswax, let's see. Unbleached beeswax and food grade mineral oil. So these are the two products that we use and we apply them monthly, generously, and uh, you're going to learn more about that in just a moment. So you use an applicator or a plastic bag, work it in in a circular motion, do this monthly, and then let it dry overnight as preferred, and you can repeat. After it dries, you warm this in a bowl of water and apply just a few small dabs, and wow, it's going to be good. That is a safe cutting board. Every knife should be paired with a butcher block throughout the kitchen. Uh -huh. Proper maintenance should be applied every month. finish loaves. I love butcher block. Yeah, this is end grain maple. You can see it's ready for some more oil. This is edge grain cherry. It's been oiled once and then it's been sealed at the factory. Uh, it's really, really nice. I like it. And uh, this one here, this is edge grain maple. So, different looks and different uh, sizes, different thicknesses. Edge grain has certain applications, end grain has certain applications. They're all on sale at your sponsor right there. In stock and quick shipping, you're gonna love it. By the way, this is an authorized dealer with over 50 years of combined experience in butcher block. So I suggest you uh, shop with the experts Get the best the first time. That's my motto. Get the best the first time to apply mystery oil. Give it a shake. 
little bit of uh, beeswax and uh, mineral oil, some other good stuff in here. I like it. Uh, first application, just like this. Swirl motion. Yeah. Okay, once you got the swirl motion down, plastic bag. Why? Because it's recyclable and it's not flammable. Uh, I would not use uh, cloth. It'll absorb too much and it becomes flammable. Oh, look at that block. Really, really nice. You can see all the hard work has paid off just with the look and the color. Oh, yeah. If you need one of these blocks, contact your sponsor. If you need the butcher block treatment, Okay, I'm in the kitchen. I've got this fresh basil. It's looking really, really nice there. I've got a razor sharp knife. You're wondering just how sharp this is, right? Yeah. Always good to start with a very sharp knife. 